or something like it, is proud to present Laura Thomas, the fierce and funky singing, songwriting transplant from Alabama, the inspiring video art from New York's own Jim C., the incredible comedic vocal acrobatics of the amazing Zero Boy, and finally, the passionate, soulful paintings of the one and only Mr. Jack Anderson. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show! Hi, New York. My name is Jack Anderson. I'm Native American, and I love to paint. I've been painting since I was a little child. Ever since I was old enough to hold a crayon, I've been interested in color. I got involved with making art because it's my lifelong passion. It's something I do. It's something I've always done. Art is a part of me. It helps keep me balanced. It's something that I need to do. I painted this painting for my wife. She says to me, Jack, I want you to paint me an angel. I says, an angel? She says, yeah, just paint an angel. So I looked through my books. I went to the museum. I saw some Renaissance painters, how they painted angels. And this is what I came up with. I call this comfort. The woman in the picture with the gold blanket on, she's obviously had a bad dream or a dream. And she needs comfort from that. The angel comes and comforts her. My wife, Cynthia, is my greatest inspiration. She inspires me to paint. She's even had me, inspired me, I should say, to uh, embark on this new style. Because before, I basically did abstracts. Now, as you see around, I'm doing like very figurative work. There are a lot of other things that inspire me. Cities inspire me. My children inspire me. The old stories inspire me, such as we have in one of my paintings here, or two of my paintings that I brought with me, uh, the Three Sisters stories, which is about the Native American stories of corns, beans, and squash, how they're always together and always helping each other. These, these are the things, just some of the things that inspire me. This painting is titled Corn Braids. I painted this with uh, two things in mind. It's the second in the series, of my Three Sisters series. There are going to be five of them. Also, I painted this with mine of the Oneida people upstate New York. They're having a struggle right now. And I painted this for them. You know, this is their traditional longhouse here. And I put a contemporary house on the other side. And what I know that the Oneida do is they braid corn in the fall. So I have the three sisters here braiding corn, putting corn braids together. Also, it looks like someone's had a baby. What is that? You'll see in the next three sisters painting. An artist becomes a professional when he sells his first work. You made money off of your painting. And as long as you strive at, you know, promoting your work and putting your work out there in the galleries, on the internet, in a collector's hands, I consider you a professional. Just because you work a part, a day job, or do your, don't do your art full time, makes you no less of a professional than artists who work at this 12 hours a day. I wish I could work at it 12 hours a day. I consider myself a professional. Uh, I do shows. It's basically just getting yourself out there and getting uh, your name out there and getting into different shows and so people recognize, oh, that's your painting out there. People know who you are. Success to me is that people see my art and they want it. I mean, monetarily it helps, but success to me, they see that, oh, listen, I just have to have that. That's success to me. I mean, because the paintings are like, they're like, they're like my, my, my children. So if I'm giving you a painting, I'm giving you one of my children, I expect you to treat it as such. I don't expect it to be stacked in the closet. I uh, expect the, the painting to be hung on the wall and taken care of.
This painting is called The Day Before. I got the inspiration to do this painting when I went to a show that was almost a memorial for 9-11. All of my colleagues had the Twin Towers crashing, burning, or down already and smoke rising from them. This is how I chose to remember the Twin Towers. This is, I call it, the day before. This is the view from Jersey. As you see, the buildings are in the background, and there's the Twin Towers right there. It's a normal day, sitting here, we're reading the paper, nothing going on. New York, thanks for watching me. Thanks for letting me bring my art to you. If you'd like to know more about me, you can email me at cryingraven at redpride.com. Thanks again. It's been real. My name is uh, Zero Boy. I'm a vocal acrobat, comedian, theater artist, wacko, radical element, evolutionary agent, and uh, I make uh, sounds and do weird uh, kind of cartoony effects with it, so I'm kind of like... So I do, you know, stuff like that and uh, kind of some beatbox things. And uh, been doing it for a long time. I learned how to do voice stuff when I was a little kid. I played by myself. I created my own worlds. Uh, I would do Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. I would do uh, the you know fire forest fighter and uh, you know you know do all those kind of things by myself and it was easier to play by myself than to play with others at that time. That's a question of collaboration. When I was younger, I had a problem collaborating, but uh, so yeah, you know I, it became my world and so the, you know in order to create a car, you make the car with sound and a little bit of movement and action. Um, I think success is achieved when you create the things that you want to create, when you're doing the art that you want to do, in some ways. I mean, it depends on how you define success. If it's, I want to create my art and do my thing, and I want to be able to live from it, and you're able to do that, that's fine. Uh, some people consider success, you know, being just basically being able to pay all the bills and, and have a life and family and stuff. Um, for myself, uh, I don't feel like I'm successful. Um, because uh, for all the ideas and dreams that I have, there's still, you know, 80% haven't been completed. And I know most artists probably feel the same thing, that their ideas are, are greater than their actual uh, ability to manifest them. So the more I manifest them, the more successful I think I'd feel. And uh, I guess if that means I get paid and that allows me to do the projects that I want to do the way I want to do them, that would be better. Um, I was a, um, a Catholic Jew, or a Jewish Catholic, depending upon which side of the coin you flipped over first. My mom was Catholic.
No, yeah, I, uh, day job. Um, sometimes I have a day job. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I do voiceovers. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I do gigs that pay money. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes it goes really well. Sometimes it goes really bad. Uh, a lot of, I think uh, Philip K. Dick said, you know, if you want to be a writer, for 10 years you have to be prepared to eat the grass and the lawn. And then maybe you'll get 50 cents for your first, you know, novel. So I've kind of lived that up and down hills and valleys. My name is Zero, but my name is, my name is, my name is. We are family. Woo ha, woo ha. You're toxic. You can check me out. Check, check me out. Check me. www.zeroboy.com. Calm, calm, calm. Yes, get calm. I can't. I can't. <laughs>My name is Jim C, and I've been an active artist in New York, especially in the uh, Lower East Side, otherwise uh, known as the East Village, since around 1981. And uh, when I came up to New York, I came from North Carolina, where I was going to college. I was in a, a master's program at Wake Forest University. And it was there that I picked up a reel-to-reel -reel Sony Porta pack and I started to experiment with video art. And uh, from my experimentation with video art, I was also involved with darkroom photography. So I would take photographs of the video screen and then manipulate the image in the darkroom. Now, some 20 some odd years later, we are able to do the kind of things that I did in the darkroom uh, with uh, a laptop computer. So what I've done is evolved my art uh, through technology to a, a really higher place. Now tonight I am going to do a video at the Remote Lounge and the title to that is The Dance of the Apocalypse. Now I was thinking of uh, the Hindi Hindu god Shiva. Uh, Shiva is the dancer who is uh, dances on a figure which is a person that represents ignorance and uh, Shiva is known as the destroyer of universes okay in hi in Hindu thought Shiva is not just a destroyer but in order for there to be new creation one must destroy the old in order to move on to the new so this idea of the dance of the apocalypse is to take the image of a dancer and then combine that with different abstract images and also apocalyptic images and combine those into one piece. I have now begun experimenting with what I guess they call VJ software which automatically triggers uh, many different clips and so it's kind of a live post-production uh, environment where you can uh, uh, vibe off of the music and the audience and and create something on the fly as it's happening. I, I'm someone who believes that that art should not have boundaries separating the various forms. I, I used to read people like Arto, who talked about uh, total theater. Total theater being something where all many different art forms all come together for, to create one uh, expression. Uh, and so I see video as a tool that can help break down those boundaries. You know, I would say that the most creative people always are in a place where there's a sense of awe where there's a sense of discovery, where you're always learning. You're always learning. I think there's a lot of people down here in New York that are doing their art on a professional level, and uh, they might not have broken through to that 1.5% that did break through. And in my feeling, art is something that really, uh, to be a healthy individual, uh, 
people should be going home and creating art. It's, it's, it's a shame that people have to be active in this kind of feudal uh, kind of system where we're engaged in daily working activities to such a degree that when you get home you're too tired to create anything and you want to sit down and drink a beer and watch the uh, Yankees. But uh, please, everyone should hopefully someday be able to express themselves in a creative way. But the, I think it's the, um, the commitment that one has to their art that's what makes you a uh, professional. There are a lot of people that are naysayers and uh, we live in a tough town. But uh, 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 stick to your vision. And I always advise people to stick to their vision. I mean, you know, take uh, tips and suggestions, but, you know, process that into your, make it your own. Make it your own and share your vision with others. Well, thank you very much. I've really enjoyed talking to you. And uh, my, my name is Jim C. People call me Jim C. Uh, my stage name for VJ is Nadada, N-A-D-A-D-A. -A -D -A. And my email address is Nadada, N-A-D-A-D-A, -A -D -A, at bestweb, B-E-S-T-W-E-B, -E dot net, N-E-N-E-T. And I, I've really enjoyed talking to New York City, because New York City is the place to be. Love it. My name is Laura Thomas. I'm a musician um, living in New York City. I'm from Alabama, but I've been here in New York for two and a half years doing the music thing. I got a neighbor who hates me, got a president who baits me, got a god who won't take me. I'm loving and lazy, a world who can't face me, cause my government's crazy and I'm tired of bracing for the end of the world. So I was given a guitar a few years ago by a boyfriend and um, I would try to play it every once in a while but I generally would just get pissed off at myself because it sounded, it sounded hideous. I don't know if you've ever listened to somebody try to play guitar who doesn't know how to play guitar but it's awful and so I generally after 30 seconds got really mad threw it on the ground and never played it and then a couple years after I got this guitar the, the boy dumped me and then just to make him feel really bad I learned a song on guitar and I made him listen to me play it before before I told him I never wanted to see him again. And uh, and that was great. And then and then I wrote all this music about how much I hated him, <laughs> which is a great way to start writing music, you know. I feel like writing music is like being possessed by a demon almost. Like I have to exercise it in order to function emotionally. Uh, so I write, you know, I, lo I wish that I could sit down and write music. I try sometimes, and it's just not there. And then other times, I guess all musicians must experience this. You sit down and write a song in 10 minutes. It's the best thing you wrote all year, and who knows where it came from, but... When we do, we will scrape and peel our feet from your table. I hold in my hand a bit of pill that I can't abide so I can say you're on inside the beautiful. 
beautiful land. I remember I played a gig in B3. I don't know if you've ever been there. Uh, downstairs they have a little basement bar, and, and I, I was playing guitar and had a girl playing with me, singing with me, harmonies, and there were two people in the audience, you know, because I just moved to New York, I didn't know anyone, so I had the two of us playing for two people, and it was miserable, and we did the show anyway, and now, you know, last week we played a show for a couple hundred people, so it gets better, the scene grows, but it's like brute force, you know, for every person that comes to believe in me, it's, it's, it's so much work, it's monumental work, so I guess that only changes when somebody with a lot more money than I have says, I'm going to invest in you and, and spread the gospel of your music, you know, far and wide, because I certainly can't do it myself. <laughs> My business card says Laura Thomas, rock star. And from the minute I got here, in my own mind, I was a rock star, regardless of the fact that I was temping and doing five jobs to try and pay for my music, because people were paying to come see in my music, even if it was only two people who came in one day to see my music. If anyone is paying to see my music, then in my mind, that's, that's a job that I have, and so I can call myself a professional. This, the songs that I feel very attached to right now do, do, have, um, do make a commentary on the current state of the world and, and the city and, and the people that I love and know. Thank you so much for listening. Again, my name is Laura Thomas. If you want to hear more of my music, you can hear it on my website, which is www.laurabama.com, which is just like Alabama, but it's Laura Bama. And um, you can take my music for free and listen to it all you want. Thanks to all the artists and all the people that made this show possible. Special thanks to New York City for providing a breeding ground of creativity. It's art. Or something like it's art. Or something like it. This is Art or Something Like It. Presenting a gallery of amazing artists each and every week and more integrity than he can shake a stick at. For more information about the show or any of the artists on the show, please visit artorsomethinglikeit.com. Next time you experience something new and you don't know what to make of it, you should ask yourself, is it art or something like it? Thank you. Good night. I'm harder something like it.